Hey, good morning, good morning, Vazalwane. Good morning, my brothers and sisters, my mothers and fathers. Good morning, good morning. It's a new day. This is the day the Lord that has made. Hey, it's Friday. It was a Friday, you know. People used to say it was a Friday. Hey, we know when people do not want to go to work anymore, they will be celebrating Friday like, hey, like no other. And they ended up taming Friday to be, hey, it was a Friday. And then Monday, hey, blue Monday. And when you check all those things, you realize that it's about people trying to shy away from work. Mzalwane life is about work. And as you live, as long as Sapila Mzalwane ndota kufani gobe, ndota kufani shone pants, we are such answer. And exile na mtlanje Mzalwane ngit, good morning, good morning. My name is Fusiso, in case you do not know my name. And I'm a son of uh, Pastor Joylin and Pastor Strike. And here I am today, Ketis of them sitting on this chair to come and encourage you for the final day of the week as we close a Friday. And I hope you have had a great time throughout the week. Sons and daughters of Mana Tabanekli, I welcome you. Our fans on Facebook, uh, our friends on YouTube, here we are once again. Thank you for following us. Thank you for being part of this channel. Thank you for encouraging us with your messages. Hey, it has been a marathon, but it is a marathon that has trained us. It's a marathon that has equipped us. It's a marathon that has taken us this far. Here we are. We are still standing. The enemy was roaring when we started in March. The enemy was roaring every day. He would try to come out and cause fear among the lives of people. But hey, by the grace of God and the leadership of our parents, we stood and we continued to preach the word. We continued to preach the undiluted gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And once again, today here we are, Mzalwane. It's a new day and hey, it's time to wake him, Zalwan. It's time to defend our territory. It's time to defend what the Lord has given us. That has been our subject throughout the week, talking about defending it, him, Zalwan. Talking about encouraging you to stand up and defend that gift that God has given you. Defend that dream that you have. Defend that vision that you have. Defend that family that you have. Defend that marriage that you have. Defend those children that you have. Defend that business that we were about defending him, Zalwane, from the beginning of the week. And my, as we close this week, my brother, my sister, we are still talking defense, defense, defense in Zalwane. And in the words of our father, I saw his message yesterday. He was talking about defending, and as we defend, we must also be ready to attack. Let's defend and attack like Nehemiah and his team. While with one hand they worked, with the other hand they carried the weapon. So they were defending and attacking him. Zalwane, you must defend and attack. And I thank you, Mzalwane, and we are going to be finding our scripture reading from this, uh, the word of God that we've been reading throughout the week from the book of Nehemiah second, sorry, sorry, from the book of Samuel, I've been talking about Nehemiah, from the book of second Samuel chapter 23, and we are continuing uh, reading and we're reading verse 11 and uh, verse 12. It reads as follows. And after him was Shama, the son of Aji, the Harorite. The Philistines had gathered together into a troop where there was a piece of ground full of lentils. So the people fled from the Philistines. But he stationed himself in the middle of the field, defended it, and killed the Philistines. So the Lord brought about a great victory. Hallelujah. The Lord brought about a great victory. And let's go two scriptures up. That is our scripture of the day today. And it's 2 Samuel chapter 23. And we are reading verse 9 and verse 10. After him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Ahohite, one of the three mighty men with David, when they defied the Philistines, who were gathered there for Bethlehem, and the men of Israel had retreated. He arose and attacked the Philistines until his hand was weary, his hand stuck on the sword, and the Lord brought about a great victory that day, and the people returned after him only to plunder, and the people returned after him only to pick up the spoil. Hey, Salwane, this is the word of God, and Father, we thank you for this word. Mighty God, we give you the praise, and as we're going to share this word briefly this morning, Lord, may you think through my mind and speak through my lips, and may your will be done, Lord, as we talk about this scripture, as we delve into this scripture. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for our presence in every session that we have. Thank you, thank you. 
It's a Friday, and we are closing our session for the week, and we are saying defend it, Mzalwane. And we have been talking about Shama. Shama stood in the ground, stood in the middle of the ground to defend what the Lord had given them. And we see this man, Eleazar, who we are talking about today, defending the legacy of, uh, uh, of, of, of Israel because they were in a battle with the Philistines. And the Bible says that when everybody retreated, when everybody ran, this man decided that enough is enough. And the Bible says he fought until the sword was stuck in his hand, Mzalan. And I want to say to you, Mzalan, fight until your sword is stuck in your hand. Continue, Mzalan, professing the word of God until it becomes your second nature. Until it becomes you, Mzalan. Fight, Mzalan, until the word of God is united with you. Profess the word of God as you advance against the enemy. When, as we see Jesus Christ, when the enemy is tempting him, he quotes the word of God. He uses the word of God to fight. And I want to say to you, Mzalon, as you have been fighting throughout this week, as you continue to fight, Mzalon, let your fight be the fight that is through the word of God, that is dependent on the word of God. Like this man, the Bible says that he fought until the sword was stuck in his hand, until the sword could no longer come out of his hand. He fought until he was tired. But the man, even when he was tired, he never stopped fighting. He continued to fight. And the Lord looked at him. And the Lord accelerated him. And the Lord caused the sword to be stuck in his hand. And the Lord, you know, continued to empower his hand. And hey, I love it because at the end of it, the Bible says that the Lord brought about a great victory. And the people that had run away, they came to plunder. They came to just pick up what is there. But this man fought and defeated the Philistine. And I want to say to you, Salon, you've got a fight that you must fight. Until people come and benefit from your fight, Mzalwane, Auga Kali, Mzalwane, Auga Kali, until Mzalwane you fight, until you have an answer, an answer that does not benefit you alone, but benefits your family, benefits your community, benefits your, the people of the nation, Auga Kali, Mzalwane. So what I'm saying, Mzalwane, is that continue to fight. You might feel like giving up, Mzalwane. You might feel like, hey, it's no longer working. I can't do this anymore. I believe that this man, when he was fighting there, he came to that point because the Bible says he was weary. But because he still had the strength, because he still told himself that he must finish the fight, the Bible says the Lord brought about a great victory into this man's life. And God wants to bring about a great victory from Zorona in your life. But you need to stand up. God is not about prospering people that are sitting down. God is not about prospering people that are not ready to take risk in Zalwan. Some of us, we are calculating too much. That's why we end up not doing anything. Like my father would always say, that some of us, we are too careful until we are careless. And I want to say to you, Zalwan, you look at these people that we have been talking about throughout the week. If they had been careful, they would not have taken steps. But these people, they decide to defy the odds and stand and fight for what they believed in. And the Lord gave them victory. And I want to say to you, Mzalwane, God is still giving victory even today. God is still giving victory even in the year 2020. God is still saying this is the year of grace upon grace, Mzalwane. And I want to say to you, Mzalwane, as we close this week, let this be a week, Mzalwane, that you are going to write down and say, I decided to rise. I decided to defy the earth. I decided to defy my body. The Bible says that this man was weary, which means his body was saying, I can't do this anymore. But the spirit within this man kept on moving and the body had no choice. The body had no choice. It had to be attached to the sword. The body had no choice. It had to continue to fight. And I want to say to you, Salah, we cannot listen to our body that says sleep. We cannot listen to our body that says I am sick. We cannot listen to a body that says you do not qualify to do this. We cannot listen to a body that says, hey, you are too young. You are not qualifying. You are from a lower tribe. You are from people that do not qualify. We cannot continue that way, Mzalwan. But we need to rise up, defy the odds, Mzalwan. Defend what God has given you. You do not have that dream by mistake. Your dream is your dream. That's why your dream and my dream are not the same. So you must make sure that you live your dream. 
I'm not going to leave your old dream for you. The next person is not going to leave your dream for you. But each and every one of us has a duty to live for the dream that we have because that is the gift that God has given us so that when that dream is fulfilled, it does not only benefit you, but it benefits nations, it benefits people. But you need to rise up and live and be exactly what God called for you to be because the Bible says before the foundations of this world, I knew you before you were conceived in your mother's womb. I already had a plan for you. So you are not alive by mistake, Mr. Salon. Like I said in the beginning of the week, do not even think of dying. It is not an option for you. Do not even think of taking your life. It is not an option for you. But you need to stand up and fight and make sure that you change the course of history. You change the course of your life because history says his story. History is your story. And you made, made, you have to write your own story, Mr. Salon. There are people that must find courage from your story. There are people that must find life from your story. There are people that must live their dreams from your story. We are talking about the stories of these men and women that stood and defied the odds. And uh, these stories are helping us to make sure that we rise and make sure we write our own story. Because you have got a duty to write your story so that many may learn from your, your story. As we learn from the story of Eliza, as we learn from the story of Shama, as we learn from the story of Esther, as we learn from the story of the daughters of Zelophehad, as we learn from the story of Nehemiah, and, hey, Zalwana, we need your story. You've got a story that you must write, but that story is going to be written by men and women that are resilient, men and women that defy the odds, men and women that does not allow the enemy to stand on their head, but men and women that know who they are, because the Bible says that they that know they are God, they shall be dangerous, and they shall do dangerous things. And we see these men and women, because they knew they are God, they stood up and defied the odds. And the Bible says God brought about a great victory. A great victory, Zalora, is coming to you only when you are ready to take up your cross. Only when you are ready, Zalora. We're talking about our Lord Jesus Christ because our Lord Jesus Christ finished his course. He continued to the cross even, if it, even when it was so difficult. He continued to the cross carrying our sins even when he never sinned himself. He continued to the cross and he write his own story. And today we are learning. We are alive. We are saved. We are redeemed because he finished his course. And I want to say to you, Salon, you've got a duty to make sure that you run, you do not stop. Hey, Paul says that hey, every day it's a race in Zalwan that we must run. Every day is a race in Zalwan. I once gave an analog before that in the crooker right now, we are already sitting here in the crooker, Richard Caleb. And I'm, I'm, I must assure you and tell you that in the crooker, the lion is running for his meal. He is after his meal. He is putting his last, last ounce of energy for his meal. But the springbok is saying, I am not going to be the meal of a lion today. I must run and outrun the lion. And I want to say to you, Salon, I always run because when I look back, those that know me, when I came to Pulukwane, I was not like this. And I am running because I do not want poverty to catch up with me. Poverty once abused me and it will not abuse me again. So I am running in Salon, defending what the Lord has given me, defending what the Lord has put in my plate. I am running in Salon, and you have to run. I am not going to be the meal of a lion today. But I am going to run and make sure that I live yet another day to glorify the Lord. I live yet another day, having outrun the lion, having outrun the devil, having outrun the poverty. I must live yet another day of victory. For you see, with every day that passes, the springbok celebrates a day of victory. Every day that passes when the lion has caught nothing, it does not celebrate because it's a day of defeat. And I want to say to you, Salon. You are made up of a great material, the material that does not fail. Your Lord did not fail. Your Lord did not give up, but he died on the cross for the sins that he did not commit. He died for me and you. That we must be exactly what we're supposed to be, fighters, conquerors, overcomers. That is what we're supposed to be because the Lord died for us. He went through the work of the cross. He gave us a perfect example that it is possible. 
He continues even today to say, my son, my daughter, it is possible. And I want to say to him, Zalana, it is possible. We are closing this week, Zalana. We are not closing the fight. We are not closing our jury. We are not closing our defense, Zalana. We are just closing the week, getting, anticipating a new week, getting into a new week. But the race continues every day of our life. There is no off day on this race, Zalana. And I'm asking you, Zalana, defend your family. Fight for your family, Mzalwa. Fight for your children, Mzalwa. Fight for your parents, Mzalwa. Fight for your business. Fight for your marriage, Mzalwa. Fight, 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 Mzalwa. You must fight, Mzalwa. Do not give up. Fight, Mzalwa. These men that have given you, they fought a good fight. And on that point, Mzalwa, I am going to give you the scriptures. And I'm going to ask you to write these scriptures. And you go through these scriptures, Mzalwa, and continue with your fight. The scripture that has been our base scripture for the week, we find it in 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 11. And our character there, verse 11 and 12, our character there is Shama. Here we look at what Shama did. And then our second scripture, we find it from Esther chapter 4. And it's verse 15 and 16. Esther says, if I perish, I perish. But I will not let my people die without a try. But I'm going to try. And God brings about a great victory to her. And then the third scripture is the daughters of Zelophehad. Those that fought and changed the cross of the law and changed everything and managed to preserve the, in their inheritance. And we find it in Numbers chapter 27. We're reading from verse 1 to verse 7. And then the fourth scripture is Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 17 to 18. And here we see men fighting to preserve their legacy. Men fighting to preserve their, you know, the, 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 what God had given them. Building up the walls. Taking away what the enemy had stolen from them. And then we have our last scripture is in 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 9 and 10. And here we are talking about Eliza. The men that we have been talking about today. And I am saying to you, Salon, go through these scriptures. And there is many other scriptures. That's why the Bible says that there is a cloud of witnesses that are cheering us up to say, go on, you can do it. Go on, you can make it. Those men and women that believed God and their lives were never the same. And I want to say to you, Salon, we need to write a history about you. We need to testify about you, Salon. We need to testify about you so that we encourage others. And I hope, Mzalwane, you had a blessed uh, time that we spent together. And I hope you had a blessed week. And hey, Mzalwane, as I close, I want to say to you, let, let us pray, Mzalwane, before I close. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for this wonderful week that we've had. We've shared your word, oh Lord. We've been encouraged by your word. And we thank you, Father, that, Lord, you have opened your word through God the Holy Spirit to our understanding. And my dear God Almighty, we will not sit down and allow the enemy to dance over our heads, but we will stand up, my dear God, tremble over serpents, scorpions, and all the powers of the enemy as we advance to our place of victory. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. My oh Lord, we give you the praise, the honor, the glory, and the adoration. Thank you, Heavenly Father. My brothers and my sisters, meet you at the top. That is where you belong. Greatness is in you, for a greater God is in you. May God richly bless you. Have a blessed weekend. Follow all our other programs that are running. We have programs running throughout the week, half past seven in the evening. And tomorrow, we're having a great time with the GFG at four o'clock. And then we'll have our health talk in the evening. Tonight, we're having Papa Mkwena. is going to be sharing at half past seven. Then on Sunday, Mzalane, meet you at Farm Life. Meet you at Farm Life. We're going to have a great time, a great service on Sunday with our spiritual parents, Pastor Strike and Pastor Joylene. And I take this opportunity to thank them for the time and the training for me to be here on this seat that uh, belongs to them. I really appreciate it. And I say, Mzalwane, have a blessed day. God bless you.